Now, back to Sunrise on News Radio 880 KCMX. Shout, shout, shout. I'm a talking to you. Come on. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to 17 Minutes After the Hour. Welcome to the Sunrise Show. Craig from again is your host, and so glad to welcome onto the program Jason Castor. And he's uh, he's local here, lives in the area. His family is here, and uh, he spent some time in Oklahoma as a storm tracer. He's a graduate from SOU, and he has decided with the last 10 years or so that he wants to hike the entire Pacific Crest Trail. And Jason, great to have you in this morning. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having me. This is uh, really cool. I mean, uh, a lot of folks will hike a portion, a day trip of the Pacific Crest Trail. If they get really rambunctious, they might do a weekend and hike, you know, 25 miles or something like that. But this trail, Pacific uh, uh, Crest Trail from Campo, California, all the way up to, what, Vancouver or something, 2,650 miles. Yeah, yeah, I think it's 2,660. Yeah, uh, yeah, so... Uh, that's just wild, and uh, you can you can check. Just I've got this uh, Pacific Crest Trail Association uh, PCTA dot org is a great way to start. Yep. And so tell us how this started. What did you get this crazy idea? Yeah. Well, when I was uh, attending school at SOU, I was driving uh, Clover Creek Road to Dead Indian Road from Klamath Falls over to Ashland. And uh, this random guy comes walking out of the woods, kind of waving at me. And, and uh, you know, I, I don't typically pick up hitchhikers, but this guy looked friendly enough, had a big smile. And so I, I pulled over. I said, what's going on, man? And, and he said, hey, I'm, I'm hiking this, this big trail. I need to ride into Ashland to get a food resupply. And um, are you headed that way? And I said, sure, yeah, you can hop on in. So it, it took about a half an hour to drive into town. And on the way there, he regaled me with these big tales of the Pacific Crest Trail and how amazing it was. And so that kind of instilled an interest in me. But how am I going to be able to take, you know, six months out of my life and, and just disappear and, and go do this? Because that's how long it's going to take to hike this trail. Yeah. Six months. Yeah. Five and a half to six months. Wow. So, yeah. It's, it's amazing. I've hiked the Appalachian Trail. We spent a week, I mean, in the Boy Scouts, we spent a week on the Appalachian Trail, had the best time of our lives. 80 miles is what we covered. Yeah. And, you know, the vertical climb on the Appalachian Trail is a pretty big deal. Uh, and we always heard about the Pacific Crest Trail. And it's kind of funny. Folks on the west will do the PCT and folks on the east will do the Appalachian, you know, the AT, they call right. it. And uh, so it's, it, I've never done the Pacific Crest Trail, but I've been on it, uh, but, but never any amount of hiking like that. So then, right. of course, the movie Wild has come out. Yep. And the big tourism, Oregon, and their big uh, tourism uh, symposium this week, they're they're really tying in, and this is something that's interesting, and you, we were talking about this over the weekend, is they're limiting to 50 permits as far as when you can leave per day. Per day, right. Yeah, that's something new this year. Uh, last year they had, I think it was about 1,500 people total that registered for a through hiking permit. This year, in April alone, 50 per day, 30, 30 days in April, that's 1,500 total right there. And then outside of April, there's some in March, some in May. They're, they're expecting over 2,000 people to register this year. And you can imagine all of those people leaving the trail within a week or so, which kind of happened last year. They had to spread that out in some way. So yeah, they, exactly. they did the 50 per day. Which... Well, I, I, you know, I think about the massive amount of people. And when we would get out on the trail, we, would, we were almost, we were, during the day, we were happy to see folks because we didn't see them very often. You know, right? You know, and now I can imagine it would be something like uh, uh, Yosemite, where there you pull up, and as you get within five, ten miles of the park, all of a sudden you hit that gate, and the line is there of cars, and they yeah. have to let only so many cars in as the cars exit. And I'm thinking, wow! So that's kind of what's going on with Pacific Crest Trail. So Jason, we're talking with Jason Castor, and he's. Uh, going to be hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. And, Jason, you've got everything tied up, right? I guess you've got your stuff stored at your folks. So Right. For the most part, I'm, I'm still doing some meal planning at this point. I'm, I'm uh, dehydrating some food. In fact, I have some, some uh, morel mushrooms I went out and picked, and they're, they're on the dryer at my grandparents' Very house good. right and, now. And so. where, when do you leave? 
Uh, April 21st is my official start date, but I'll fly out of Medford on the 19th. I have a friend in San Diego, uh, Jill okay. Krause. She actually used to live here in the Valley, too, and she's given me a ride to the trail. Very good, very good, very good. So a shout-out to... What's her last name? Krause. Krause. All right, so a shout-out to Actually, Jill. it's Amarilli. I'm sorry, she got married. <laughs> <laughs> Get in trouble for that one. So. Uh, all right, Amarilli. Okay, yeah. good deal. Well, this is exciting because now... See, I didn't have the luxury of, of uh, carrying... I mean, I carried a... Uh, back in the day, it was a Kodak 110, you know, the little camera deal. Right. But nowadays, with iPhone, that's got to be crazy. But how, how would you charge your iPhone? Yeah, absolutely. There's there's several different options. Uh, a lot of people try to use the solar chargers, but those can be flaky. You know, of course, you've got to worry about weather and whatnot being uh, sunny to be able to charge your solar charger. But I'm, I'm going with uh, a bigger battery pack. It's called an Anchor... 13,000, I think, and uh, so what that will do is um, charge all my devices, because I'm bringing a GoPro, iPhone, um, possibly an, an additional camera. I'm, I'm still deciding on that, but, uh, you know, you're, you're in between towns for up to two weeks at a time. You, you don't have that access to electronics, and you want to exactly, keep yeah. your devices charged so you can document. Well, so. exactly right. We've got uh, Jason Castor in the studio. We're talking about the Pacific Crest Trail, and it cuts. It's 2,660 what? 60... I, I don't know the exact... Yeah, 2,663, something close oh to that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. He's got to do the whole thing from Campo, California, which is the very end uh, tip there, all the way into Canada. Uh, Jason, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, we got to get to a quick break, and then we'll talk about that because you're going to keep your Facebook page, be able to logging on and posting right. pictures and things, right? Yes, and I have a blog as well. I can give you the address to that. Let's do that as well. So if you ever wanted, I mean, we can live vicariously through Jason and his his uh, exploits on the Pacific Crest Trail. So coming up, we'll talk more about that. The Bloomberg Market Update is next. You're on the Sunrise Show live and in person. Of course, we'll take your calls as well. The phone number is 541-772-8255. When we come back, I think I already told you, the Bloomberg Market Update is next. We'll return after this. Everybody, welcome back. 33 minutes after the hour, we're continuing with Jason Castor, a local. Uh, well, Jason, I mean, you're a, a land man by trade, and you've been to you know Oklahoma on a storm tracing thing. You're 35 years old. You've graduated from SOU, and your family lives locally here. And and you're going to go on the Pacific Crest Trail. And we were just talking off the break. The gear you've got uh, up to a couple thousand bucks because I was kind of wondering how you orchestrate that and then the food and then drying i mean that's the a number one is dried food because it all reconstitutes i mean you can make right. vegetable soups and uh, you can eat actually eat very well and even the powdered eggs and powdered ice cream quite frankly <laughs> yep <laughs> so uh, you know the next thing is the resupply tell folks that they don't know how in the world do you hike 2663 miles and then plan your resupply every what every three days or something like that yeah three days would be really nice if you could pull it off it actually is closer to five to seven days uh, between and and so you can imagine you know you're you're burning five to six thousand calories a day you're up in the high sierras your your body's not used to that you, you're burning a lot of calories and to carry that much food on your back is really difficult so you want to find the lightest food possible that has the most calories possible so, so the lightest food with the most calories what would you say that is well a lot of hikers and and this is from online forums that i've done research and people that have done the trail they add olive oil to everything so they will you know your oatmeal in the mo morning you add a little olive oil mm, your, your dinner in the evening okay. you add a little olive oil 
Uh, and then, you know, just anything that you can put together that'll, you know, get you the nutrients you need. You, you don't want to skimp on the veggies, you know, so you want to find the freeze-dried veggies. It's amazing how light freeze-dried things oh, really are. it's fantastic. Yeah. It's really awesome. I mean, uh, you know, uh, nuts... Right? I mean, right. nuts are great for a protein because, the I mean, like peanuts, I mean, they, yep. you know, gorp is what they used to call yeah. it, you know, and uh, trail mix is what that is, basically. But, uh, you know, all the high protein, high fat, uh, not so much high fat, but just calories in general. Right. And and you do need fats. You know, that's where olive, olive oil is, is kind of gets you the fats. And, and so you don't want to skimp on that. And then, of course, you want your vitamins. You uh, a lot of hikers swear by vitamin C or uh, emergency uh, oh, right. because of the, the high concentration of vitamin C because you're, you're just not getting that. You don't have fresh fruits available on the side of the trail. So you, you need to think about those things and, and try to plan your meals accordingly. And then, of course, you have to kind of make a strategy for when you're going to resupply and, and uh, how you're going to get to that resupply. And so there's a lot of trail towns that are uh, sometimes just a mile off the trail, nearly on the trail. Some are 15 to 20 miles off the trail. You have to uh, hitchhike a ride, which hitchhiking these days is a bit taboo, but there's there's kind of a trail community in some of these right. trail towns. And, and like we were just talking earlier, that's how I found out about the trail, was giving somebody a ride to pick up a resupply. Exactly. Now, the next thing is water. The most basic element is water. California's going through a drought. You're going to be, yeah. I mean, it's 2,663 miles, and how much of it is California? Got to be 700, 800 of it. Yeah, California Ooh. is is more than half. You, you know, you think Oregon and Washington would make up the other half, but California is big. And going through the high Sierra, you have these switchbacks. So a lot of the mileage in California is or composes more than half of the trail. So um, California is a lot, and the drought is a big concern for me this year. There's there's sometimes reliable sources that are going to be dry. Uh, fortunately, there's um, a website. Um, I believe it's uh, pctwater.com or pctwater.org. Yeah. And uh, folks that have gone past those water sources will uh, send updates to that group, and they will they they do a pretty good job of keeping it updated. What water sources have dried up? What water sources are there? And of course, sometimes there's people they call them trail angels who will bring out a, a water cache, what they call it, and they'll, they'll just leave, you know, several gallons of water right on the trail. And, and wow. if, if you need Talk it. Talk about water angels. Yeah, Yippee. exactly. <laughs> they're, they're the most needed sometimes. Of course, we don't want to rely on them because it might not be there. So right. you still need to carry a lot of water between sources, and water's really heavy. Oh, it is. Absolutely. Uh, eight pounds a gallon. So, so li listen to this. Um, it, uh, the Pacific Crest Trail crosses 57 major mountain passes, more, passes more than 1,000 lakes, four national monuments, five state parks, six national parks, seven BLM field offices, 25 national forest units, and 48 federal wilderness areas. Unbelievable. You know, now, Jason, you also are going to bring on a blog, chasingthehike.tumblr.com. Yes, I've been keeping it updated with all the planning and everything. But once I start the trail and as I have Internet access, I'm going to try to update photos, maybe a video if I have enough Internet bandwidth. And, uh, and of course, just, just blogging and, and keeping everyone updated on how things are going and, and how the journey is coming along. Yeah, this is great. Well, you can find uh, Jason Castor um, on Facebook as well or get to the, his blog, chasingthehike.tumblr.com, and we'll follow along with your progress. Jason is leaving. Uh, he'll fly out the 19th, and he'll get onto the trailhead at Campo, California, April 21st. And when does that put you in Canada? I'm estimating mid-September, so September 15th was the date that I put on my Canada permit. I actually go into Canada a little bit uh, to Manning Park. There's okay. a, some bus service there, so I can wow. make my way home. Wow, wow. Yeah. Well, Godspeed for you, sir, and it'll be great to monitor. We'll follow along, and, and if you uh, get to a phone and you feel like a call in, that would be great as well, and we'll, we'll be following along. Ladies and gentlemen, Jason Castor and his uh, trek on the Pacific Crest Trail, the PCT, and, of course, his blog, chasingthehike.tumblr.com. And, Jason, it's great to have you in this morning. And, uh, my goodness, it's fantastic. I mean, it's a yeah. great opportunity. I mean, right. Um, this is the only time that I can do it, you know, or 
I, I should say I'm doing it while I can. You know, I'm, I'm not married. I don't have kids. I, I contract my work, so I didn't have to quit a job. So it was really I, the ideal time. Yeah, and, you're able to save your yeah. money back and get right. everything organized and then and then plan it. And that's a huge planning, especially with all the dried foods. You can only think of what a special treat would be, like an ice cream cone. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You start... You, you, you're away from that for a while, and man, you start missing those kind of things. Or, or maybe a cup of ice. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I've been there. The so. things we take for granted. Yep. Exactly right. Well, we'll post up on our Facebook page, and then uh, we've got ABC Sports coming about four minutes away. Jason, thanks so much for coming in this morning. Thanks for having me. It was a good time. Yeah, good deal. All right, back on the Sunrise Show after that. A little bold, extremely fun. We'll keep you, uh, oh, we'll tie everything in as we finish up on the Sunrise Show right after this break on News Radio 880 KCMX.